Hello, I'm Joanna Friel, Chair of the Chislehurst Society, and I'm delighted to be able to talk to you today about William Willett, um, who I believe to be a well-known local character, but I think so many people don't actually know his name, so all the more reason to tell you his story. He is the man who made us change the clocks, although he didn't. Um, as I will reveal as we go through the conversation. I don't know if you've walked in the lovely National Trust estate Hawkwood and Petswood and you've found the wonderful sundial that is there um, dedicated to William Willett. Um, walk all the way round it, it is a sundial uh, that only tells the summer hours. William Willett was something of a maverick, um, actually a local builder, but he was obsessed with daylight uh, and the sunshine hours that we should live longer in. So let me tell you how that memorial came about uh, and why it's there really and a little bit more about the man who's definitely a Chislehurst resident. It's um, one of the things that irks me uh, which I probably shouldn't say but he seems to have been um, taken over by Pets Wood who have the daylight in and will it weigh? But I don't believe that William Willett ever made his way that far. Um, I think it's because he used to go through the woods, which are called Pets Wood on the Chislehurst side of the railway, um, that he's become synonymous or used by the Pets Wood end of town. But he really is a Chislehurst marker. So forgive me, I've just got my little bet noir off my shoulders there. So uh, William Willett, uh, not born in Chislehurst, he's actually from uh, Farnham, Farnham in Surrey and born in 1856. So he's um, a Victorian uh, hero or villain, depending how you end up looking at the whole story. A clever lad, educated at uh, Marleybone Grammar School and didn't carry on with his education into uh, the university level because the family already had a building firm. So he joined the family firm Willett and Son um, and they were known or became known uh, for building substantial properties with glorious windows that let all the sunshine in. They were substantial and well-built houses and if you lived in a house that was Willett built um, you would be proud of that. They were uh, well-built houses and people uh, were pleased to, to live in their properties. He built in Ealing, he built in Brighton, um, and certainly some of his buildings still exist in Sloane Square in central London. You can actually go to an estate agent's in Sloane Square and look above the uh, shop sign and you will see the W carved into the building and that is W for um, Willett and Son. And there's also a hotel in the area called the Willett Hotel. So little places for you to go and investigate if you want to discover the story further. Some of you will know that uh, the last Emperor of France, Emperor Napoleon III, uh, lived and died um, in Chislehurst in 1873 at Camden Place, which is now our golf club. And after the death of the Prince Imperial, and the departure of the Empress Eugenie from Chislehurst. She went to live in Farnborough in Hampshire and took the bodies of her husband and son with her. They're still there, slightly macabre to have the last Emperor of France on English soil. But um, the whole estate that was Camden Place came up for sale. N about uh, six, seven years ago, I was contacted by um, something of a wheeler dealer, he won't mind me, calling him that, Mr. Dave Miller, who uh, traded in documents on eBay. And what he had for sale was a huge, um, let's say four foot across by three foot down uh, indenture on vellum, an old map of Camden Place. Uh, this is what it looks like, but um, it is actually signed by William will it? And Dave knew that I couldn't resist a document of this sort, it, it, you know, real provenance, real historic provenance. And so the Chislow Society was enabled to purchase 
from Dave, this beautiful map. He gave the profits, I have to say, to the Royal Lifeboat Institution, so um, good on him. But with that map, the Chislehurst Society then um, acquired a, a Heritage Lottery Foundation grant, and that paid for the restoration of the map because it was terribly stained and torn in places. Um, but we had a, a year's worth of doing that restoration, giving talks to people, because also on that map shows the, the houses of many famous people who lived in Chislehurst, not only the emperor uh, and the empress, but uh, Sir Malcolm Campbell, the speed uh, driver, uh, signed by William Willett, John Lubbock living on the map, uh, Chubb, the security works person. So we were able to use the lottery money to tell a great number of stories about Chislehurst people. But it was Willett uh, that we were able to tell more about uh, because this map showed the areas that he developed for housing. He came to Chislehurst and purchased that estate in 1893. And he could have been a disaster for Chislehurst because being a builder, he wanted to develop the land. And what he wanted to build was 300 houses on the land of what is now Chislehurst Golf Club. So all that green and pleasant land where some people go sledging at Christmas, um, if there's ever any snow, uh, would have been a whole housing estate if Willett had uh, got his way. This is where we have to be very grateful to the Chislehurst Conservators who had at that time just set up the Act of Parliament to preserve the common land in Chislehurst and they discovered or worked hard to discover that there was um, a right of way from the entrance to Camden Place which could not uh, be crossed by developers. There were, any, there were great restrictions on that access and he would not have been able to have 300 um, homeowners and subsequently vehicles going over that threshold because it was um, access onto the common and the, the conservators were not going to give up those rights easily. Now Willis at that point could have given up and gone away, but he didn't. He very much became a member of the Chislehurst community and he worked with the conservators to develop really attractive uh, grand houses in this area. Uh, the railway had just come to Chislehurst in 1865 and with the emperor having been here we were quite a posh place to be, a place that people wanted to live. Um, a bit like having, gosh I used to say posh and Bex, but I'll say Harry and Meghan now, but like having them in town. So it, it put Chislehurst on the map. So Willett wanted to capitalise on that. And he was enabled to build houses in what is now Camden Park Road and on the wilderness and those are roads on either side of what is now the golf course so he used the boundaries of the area that he had purchased and he worked with the conservators um, a chap called Alexander Travers Hawes to set up the golf club because he couldn't have that land doing nothing for him um, and he was able to use the golf club to attract more people uh, to the uh, delightful uh, scenery uh, around Chislehurst so the first house he built was in fact for himself, which is called the Cedars. It's a beautiful house, you can still see it today, um, on Hangman's Corner, um, at the top of Summer Hill, uh, always terrible traffic going past. And it's a beautiful house built um, by Ernest Newton. Um, and you can see over the doorway of the house, the Willett family crest. It's, it's a thing of beauty actually. And then the other houses he developed uh, initially were in Camden Park Road. If you ever take a walk down there, please notice how beautiful the um, window finishes are because that was what Willett was all about. He was ab about letting in the sunshine, letting in the daylight. And these houses are all particularly characterised by large windows, um, which would uh, be uh, light and, and beautiful. We're told that the houses were named um, in alphabetical order for the name Camden, so C-A-M-D-E-N. So the first house is Camden Holt, second house is Avondale, 
The next one is Mountfield. And then you have Derwent House and Elmbank. But then the next house is Bonchester. So I don't know what happened to the inn. Um, but do take a wander along the road because those houses are a joy to have a look at. Most of them split into flats now, I'm afraid. If you take a walk along Lubbock Road, um, which is at the end of Camden Park Road, you will find um, a large stable block with a clock tower in the middle. And that is where Willett kept his horses because one of his passions was horse riding and getting out and about on horseback to enjoy the early daylight hours. In the course of my own research about Lubbock Road, I actually knocked on the door of the, of the, of the stables and um, wanted to know whether they had any old photographs of Willett or if they knew anything about the man himself. And one of the gentlemen said, oh, I, I don't know an awful lot about him, but you want to come in and see my drain cover? Well, why wouldn't I? Um, anyway, in looking at the drain cover, you look on any drain covers or coal holes in London, some of them are actually quite attractive because they have uh, names carved out in the metalwork. And on this drain cover, it says Willett and Company. So, you know, real provenance of the man that lived and worked from there. But as I say, he was uh, building his houses Physically, he wasn't doing it. He was paying other labourers to do that. So he had time on his hands uh, and he was making a bit of money from these large houses on the developing estate. So what was he doing with his time? Well, he was getting up early and he was horse riding across the commons and he was getting more and more frustrated um, as to why when he went out at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, the blinds were still down in the houses of the local residents. They weren't enjoying the sunlight, they weren't benefiting from it. And that irked him. He started to become a campaigner to stop people, as he called it, wasting the daylight. And in fact, he wrote um, 19 pamphlets on the topic of how to get people to appreciate the daylight and the way he was to do that was to say we should be getting up an hour earlier we should change the clocks move the time back um, and he even got Winston Churchill on side and there was an act of parliament uh, a bill that went through parliament in um, 1908 but it didn't get all the way through he never stopped campaigning and on, I think it's his grave or on the memorial in the woods, it does say he was a tireless advocate for uh, daylight saving. The war was the next thing to come along in 1914. And unfortunately, I don't quite know why he was doing it, but uh, Willett travelled, he went to Spain. He may have had property there, who knows? Um, but he contracted what we now know to be Spanish flu and what a thing to be talking about whilst we're here in the midst of the pandemic times. But um, it not only contracted the Spanish flu, unfortunately, he died of it as well. So that was 1915, 4th of March. His gravestone in St Nicholas Churchyard has been cleaned many times because we really don't think that it should look uh, dirty and unloved and the family, the Willett family, have very kindly through a, a trust fund paid for that grave to be um, cleaned up and the National Trust have uh, paid to clear the woodlands in uh, Petswood and make the sunlight shine so much more down on the memorial that is there in the woods. I'll tell you a little bit more about that shortly. But through the lottery project, um, we realised that in 2014, 2015, we were coming to 100 years since the death of Willett and we wanted to tell the story and make sure that more people knew about this tireless adv advocate for daylight saving. So I contacted many of his family. Some of you will know that uh, Willett's great-great-grandson is Chris Martin of Coldplay. 
So I thought, wow, this is a real opportunity. I'll, I'll get um, a really famous person to come over Chislehurst to Chislehurst. Well, I failed, but I did get Gwyneth Paltrow's ex-mother-in-law in my car. So uh, Chris Martin's mother came along with his grandfather and we had an amazing day in Chislehurst where they walked into the woods to see the sundial. We had a blessing at the graveside and we went to Camden Place um, to look at the map and, and to look um, at the place that, that Willett had bought and developed further. So um, that was a real joy for us here in Chislehurst and a real pleasure. And it was then that the family said they would pay to have the grave cleaned up. It was the war that was probably the saving grace of Willett, but, but sadly he didn't live to know about it. Um, I, I, I should finish on the um, story of his funeral, actually, because I don't know whether it's hyperbole from the journalists, but the, the report of the funeral says that uh, there were beautiful flowers, uh, daffodils and tulips on the day, which made it look like a particularly sunlit day, and that at the time of the benediction in church, a shaft of sunlight came through the stained glass windows and rested on the coffin. So a portent, perhaps, of what was to come. But with the war, we needed to make savings. And Churchill did actually, in 2016, pass the Daylight Saving Bill, which meant that thousands and thousands of pounds were genuinely uh, saved because there was less coal being used, the, there was less to, to fire up electricity to light people's houses. Um, and they, they made some big calculations on the money that was saved just by changing the clocks, by changing the clocks uh, by an hour so that we all got up and lived and, uh, with the daylight and went to bed with the end of the daylight. People don't like it now. Um, you know, come October when, we, when the, the, the clocks fall back again. Um, but in the springtime, people quite like it once they get used to the change of the hour, but where we can really benefit. Um, but the Daily Telegraph wrote in 2016, when the Daylight Saving Act was actually passed, they said that um, a few years ago, the project was regarded with good humoured derision and its amiable originator, the late Mr. William Willett, was deemed a little mad. Nevertheless, in less than a fortnight, this country will start to save the daylight he loved so much. The Daylight Saving Bill through the First World War actually only survived during the war. We went back and changed the clocks to uh, no normal time. Um, and then in 1925, um, the Daylight Saving Bill went through permanently. So there was a period of time after the First War and way before the Second that we were back on British Standard Time. But at that point, it was felt that there should be a memorial to Willett, whose whole idea this had been. So there was £12,000 raised by the public um, to buy the woods um, of the National Trust that, that now belonged to, and gifted those to the National Trust. And a granite memorial was designed by somebody called G.W. Miller and unveiled in the National Trust woods by Lord Camden. So that seems particularly fitting. And the National Trust look after the land so well now. It, it's, a, it's a real joy to see it. So in uh, 2016, the National Trust invited me and the Willett family back again um, to commemorate the actual passing of the Daylight Saving Bill. So we went into the woods. I got to ride in a, in a Land Rover, which was great fun. Um, and we commemorated that uh, Daylight Saving Bill at the time. I never succeeded in getting Chris Martin to come to Chislehurst, but I did get his brother to come because he's an architect. So he's probably followed in the Willett building tradition. Um, and he came along and presented prizes to our youngsters at Farrington School some years ago now um, for a local art competition based on uh, their ideas of architecture and some of the grand houses in Chislehurst. So Willett didn't know what success his uh, pamphleteering was going to come to during his lifetime. So his, he is a posthumous hero, uh, but I do believe he needs to be commemorated and his story told, at least here in Chislehurst, if, if nowhere else. Um, and it's been a pleasure for me to be able to share that with you today. Thank you very much.
uh, we have had a few questions popping up um, and I'm delighted to be able to answer them as best I can. The first is, um, where can you see the map that I showed you uh, today? Well, it is now on the wall of the Chislow Society head headquarters at the old chapel, um, Queen's Passage, just off the High Street. And when things go back to normal, probably after the middle of June, um, you'll be able to come into our coffee mornings on Wednesday mornings and have a really good close-up look at Willett's signature and the designated areas where he was building. It's, it's a beautiful map um, and I could wax lyrical about it for a long time, but it's certainly done us no harm to, to have it and to restore it because we've learned a lot about conservation uh, techniques and we've garnered more volunteers through its storytelling, quite frankly. So yes, um, come along and see us when times open up a bit more. Another question is, why do you think he failed uh, to get the clocks to change in his lifetime? I think probably because what he suggested, which I should probably have mentioned, was quite a convoluted plan. He, Willett, actually wanted us to change the clocks by 20 minutes over um, a three, four week period. So he wanted us just to go back 20 minutes and then the next week a further 20 minutes and another 20 minutes after that. And I think for the railways particularly uh, and sort of timetabling, it was just too complex. So that's probably the reason why it never got through um, as an act of parliament. When Churchill got it through later, it was the distinct hour, much more clear, but that that had never been suggested by Willett. He went for a, a complex mathematical algorithm, which wasn't gonna work. Um, the final question is, is there a statue to Willett locally? Um, there isn't, nor is there a museum or anything like that. We had um, an author come and visit us from America, David Peru, uh, who wrote a book called Saving the Daylight, which is available at the Greenwich uh, Maritime Museum because he writes about all the uh, daylight saving issues around the world. I think it was New Zealand that first had the uh, daylight saving uh, and the book tells extremely well how uh, the world adapted to daylight saving and Willett gets a good mention in there. And it was uh, Mr. Peru that said, you should have a statue locally. Um, uh, we haven't, we have the sundial and we have his clean grave and we will continue to tell his stories. So um, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for listening. All the very best to you.